All right, on this episode of the Hyperfast Mortgage Blitz, we are going to talk about how to become a landlord, how to become a real estate investor by buying your second home. So stand by. All right, Dustin, how are you doing today? I'm doing unbelievable today, Dan. Great to have you back in the <laughs> studio. Uh, before we jump on the topic today, you are a real estate investor yourself, correct? Correct. Yeah, so am, so am I. I've, I've been renting out real estate since 2005, I believe. I bought my first home in 2003, second one, which which is basically what we're going to talk about today or how to do it. it hasn't really changed much right. uh, lending is a little tougher though but so I've been doing this for 15 years you know and I always think it's important for people to get advice from people that have actually been doing what they are giving advice about right absolutely so I think one of the best ways that people can become a real estate investor landlord is is after they they buy their uh, first home and then, you know, that first home purchase, if, if you live in it, it, it may or may not, and it just depends who you ask, be considered an investment, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think in the long run, those people will make money, a lot of money, more than they would on stocks and they need a house to live. So I, I, I do put it in that, um, that category of investment, even though there's guys like Robert Kiyosaki who say, you know, home that you live in, you have to pay every month so then technically it's a liability i get that but we all need a place to live so you got to pay something right? right so you're so that that's my counter argument there and i think most people through the tax deductions and the appreciation uh and the forced kind of the forced savings of paying a principal your principal down every month I, I consider it an investment but definitely a good way to to become you know one of the most tried and true ways of building wealth by being a landlord having rental income is to buy a second home after after you've already been in your home for you know a year or two right uh and, yeah, and that's and and what we're talking about just so they know and then yeah, i'll yeah. let you, you jump in because you got a lot to <laughs> add but what i'm talking about is is you know buying buying a, a, a second home you know, maybe, maybe it's in a different area. Maybe it's bigger. Maybe it's the same. Who knows? But then don't sell that first one. Mm -hmm. Keep it because you probably already got it in a great rate based on owner occupancy, right? Because owner occupied rates are better, a little right. lower. Uh, rent that one out and then move in. Right. How does that work from a qualification uh standpoint? Let's let's assume whoever this is, whoever's listening, has the money. For a down payment, all right, because to qualify for a home, there's there's usually two issues: the the down payment and mm -hmm. the debt to income ratio. Exactly. How are they going to get the, the debt to income ratio on house number two when they still owe money on house number one? Yeah, that's the tricky part that you know you got to figure out, right? I mean, uh, you know, we had a client she was living in her, her family's house, right? Had been in the family for years and she wanted something bigger and she didn't want to sell it, uh, but you know, she didn't have enough income to qualify for both mortgages, right? So uh, the, what you can do with the certain types of loan programs is you can put a lease in place while you're still living there and you're searching for your next home, you get a renter set up. And then with that lease, you can use 75% of that rental income as rental income, right? So you can use that to offset the mortgage that you have on it in your debt to income ratio. And do the renter have had to have made any payments to you yet? No. No, okay. That's the that's the thing. Because if you were still living in it, that <laughs> you would not have with you. Would, yeah, no one, no one wants uh, roommates, yeah, probably. right? <laughs> or maybe you do. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it might be tough in some places, right? Um, but no, you just need the lease there in place for when they're gonna start, obviously when you move to your next place, and then you'll be able to use that towards your income. So so the process would be, just so people understand, you you know, you know, own your home, you've lived in it, 
you start to look for a second home and then put put your your other home you know your, the home you own currently put it on craigslist zillow you know maybe list it with the real estate agent whatever you need to do um and get a lease in place by the time you know you you identify and get your second home under contract exactly and if that lease is for two thousand dollars a month you guys are going to count 75 percent 1500 of it uh to offset the 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 debt of that house exactly and the advantage i think then is now you bought this home with owner occupied fa- financing which is usually a lower down payment usually a half point or a point or even more right. lower interest rate so that's going to save you 60 at least 60 dollars a month per every 100k borrowed somewhere around there maybe maybe a little more you know on a five hundred thousand dollar house that's 300 bucks a month you save by going that owner occupancy route on the loan and you'll get that on the house number two and you'll get that income offset or that your or that that rental income will offset the debt the debt and help solve what what may be a debt to income uh ratio qualification challenge right so great way to start building your net worth and your and your wealth and you know what's is, it, is there a limit on this i mean you can't go out and do this like every month right yeah and, and i will say it is with certain investors and certain loan programs that it'll work so i mean you definitely want to make sure you talk to the loan officer before you know, you're running out telling all your clients that, but yeah, you probably won't be um, able to do it like 15 times. They're they're probably yeah, gonna like, yeah. you know, maybe only let you do it once every year or two years or somewhere right. in that range, and it'll probably depend a little bit on the exact loan program right. and your your scenario. But it is an option. I've seen this work yeah. for myself, yeah. Dustin, and lots of other people, and I know it can work for you. If you've got questions about how it works, go to hyperfastmortgage.com. We'd love to help and we've got other resources that you can access there if you're a buyer's agent if you're uh you know any but anyone considering buying a home go to hyperfastmortgage.com check it out we'll see you next time subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest hyperfast shows and remember we love reviews we hope you enjoyed the show and we will see you next time hey guys thanks for sticking around to the end i hope you enjoyed that video and if you want to see more click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos.